Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can convert EPS format characters to Cartoon Animator 5, which allows you to utilize all of the new vector features that are included in the new version. EPS is a vector file format that is often required for professional and high quality image printing. Let's start off by looking at how to download and convert the EPS reference file. We're going to use this skiing cow from Envato as our example. As you can see, there are a couple of other formats, but in this case we're going to use EPS. If we want to convert an EPS to SVG format, we can use a free image editor like Photopea, which allows you to perform this task online in your browser. To import, you can click and drag the EPS file into Photopea in your browser. You'll notice some layer and group information here, and it's important that you rearrange the group structure and names in preparation to import in Cartoon Animator 5. You'll want to move all of the groups to the top of the hierarchy and give them precise names. Keep in mind that no two groups can have the same name. After that's done, we'll go ahead and export it as an SVG file. You can load it up in your browser to ensure the appearance and colors are correct, and make sure to use WebRGB for your browser color settings. SVG is also a vector format that will not lose resolution while zooming. Okay, let's move into Cartoon Animator to import the SVG and set up the bone structure. Start by simply dragging the SVG file into your viewport, and in this case we're choosing Bone Actor. You'll automatically enter Composer mode, where you'll find the layers the same as the groups that you defined in Photopea. Keep in mind that layers have their own sprite and root bone data. First, we want to reposition the center of this character, so I'll open the bone editor and select root in the layer manager. I'll then drag the root point to where the character's feet are. I'll then move the character so that the origin point is relatively aligned with the bottom of our character's feet. Now that that's done, we can move on to setting up the bone hierarchy for this character. We want the body bone to be at the top of the hierarchy, so I'll start by selecting each layer in the layer manager and then connecting them to the main body bone point. This will create our basic bone structure, and once we have that, we can refine the bone positioning. I'll move the bone point down to the midsection of our character, and also ensure that the bone position for the tail is at the base so we can have it rotate properly. You can use the H hotkey to hide anything not selected to focus on one layer at a time. I'll do the same for all the other layers, again placing the bone point at the proper place to get the rotation result I want for that sprite. Okay, we have our basic bone structure all set up now, but we can still add more bones for the detailed animation of our character. I'll start by ensuring that my head layer is selected, and then selecting Add Bone to place a child bone for this layer. You can see it appear in the Layer Manager, and it will allow us to animate that layer in more detail. I'll then do the same for the scarf, in this case creating a zigzag pattern, which will enable it to animate in a sort of wavy way. This is a special setup that you can learn more about by checking out the spring animation tutorials. I'll move to the left hand and add another basic bone hierarchy. If you want to create more bones in between two points, you can click on the parent bone and then hit insert where you can define the number of child bones to add. You can also do vice versa to add parent bones. From there, I can just do the same thing with the other body part layers. Each sprite's bone structure will be arranged differently depending on how you want to animate that particular part. Once you're done, you can preview all of the various bone results to see how you'll be able to animate them in stage mode. Okay, now let's set up a spring effect for our bones. Open up the spring editor and we'll do the scarf first. With the scarf layer selected, I'll hit the plus button to create its own spring group, then rename it. If I have a parent bone selected and the Include Child Bones box is checked, then when you click Assign to Group, it will include the entire bone hierarchy for that layer. I can repeat the process for my other sprites as well, again making sure that the layer you want is selected before you create the group and assign the bones with spring properties. The skis will be a bit different. Because we only want the edges of the skis flopping around, 
what I want to do is assign two different groups here and leave the middle bone alone. Just select them like normal and assign to group so that they will be springy while the middle bones remain stiff. You can preview the results to check it. If you want to stiffen the flexibility of the skis, you can just go ahead and use the fast preset to make them more rigid. The tail has a rather simple structure, but as with every layer, you want to make sure that you leave at least one bone unassigned so that it can drive the spring effects for the others. Again, feel free to preview and use the templates to get the results you want. For the scarf layer, we can use the stretchy or squashy preset to simulate a more flapping in the wind sort of effect. We can set spring effects for the ski poles as well. You'll notice that the bone colors for each group are different, which makes it easier to tell them apart. Once you've assigned spring effects to all of the layers you want, you're good to go. Now you can fully animate your original EPS reference character in Cartoon Animator and take advantage of all the motion tools and vector features. Be sure to check out our other Cartoon Animator 5 tutorials for our Reillusion Courses page, and I'll see you in the next video.